In this video, we're going to take a look at the third GraphQL lab on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Finding a Hidden GraphQL Endpoint. We started this GraphQL series with an introductory video, which covered the background information like what GraphQL is, how we can work with it in Burp, and some basic about GraphQL attacks. So I'm not going to cover that, but I will cover the background information that is specific to this lab. If you're unsure about what GraphQL is, go back to that first video. If you cannot get introspection queries to run for the API you're testing, try inserting a special character after the schema keyword. When developers disable introspection, they could use a regex to exclude the schema keyword in queries. You should try characters like spaces, new lines, and commas, as they are ignored by GraphQL but not by flawed regex. As such, if the developer has only excluded the schema keyword, then the below introspection query would not be excluded and we can see a query below which has a new line after the schema. If this doesn't work, try running a probe over the alternative request method as introspection may only be disabled over post. Try a get request or a post request with a different content type like xwww form URL encoded. The example below shows an introspection probe sent via get with URL encoded parameters. With that short background out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, the user management functions of this lab are powered by a hidden GraphQL endpoint. You won't be able to find this endpoint by simply clicking pages in the site. The endpoint has also come with defenses against introspection. To solve the lab, find the hidden endpoint and delete the user car loss. And that's it, let's open up the lab. And I'm gonna start by logging in to the account. Let's just go and explore the functionality and see if we can find that GraphQL endpoint. Although. Sounds like we won't be able to because that's the purpose of the challenge. So I've changed the email. Let's go back to the homepage. Let's see if we can do anything with any of the products, but we can't. So that's basically it. We have explored the functionality. Let's go to Burp Suite now and see do we have any calls to a GraphQL endpoint, which we don't. So in the previous videos, whenever we went to the Burp history, we did see those endpoints. And this time we don't. We could just go and try and manually have a look. I think previously it was GraphQL slash V1. So we could try that. We could try all of the various options. I think there was around 10. And notice actually whenever we try the API one, we get this query not present, which is different to what we got previously whenever we put in the correct endpoint value. And that basically came back to say that it shouldn't be, or the method was not allowed. So because we were using a get request and it wanted a post request, but this time we get a different message. We could have also tried to just brute force this. So if you want to try all of the endpoints, let's actually, let me send this to the intruder and we can go to payloads and we'll just basically put in all of the various possibilities here. Although there is the slash V1 as well, you might want to add to the end of that. And then where do we want to set that? Well, it'll be right here. And then if we do start attack, it'll very quickly come back and tell us which ones. Oh, and notice it came back with a 404. Hopefully you can see the reason. It's because we have a URL encoded slash. So go back to our payloads, scroll down and just untick this option to encode payloads. Click start. And this time we get that 400 for the API. So I'm gonna right click this. I'm gonna send it to the repeater and let's go and have a look at it in there. One thing we can do here, if we did wanna try this as a post method, we can change that right here, change request method. It's now a post. And we actually get a message saying that method is not allowed this time. So the opposite of previous, we could also still try like changing to JSON and add in a JSON object to see if it's any different, but it's not. So let me do control and Z. I'm going to undo that. Let's go back to our get request. There we go. And next I'm going to copy from the burp docs, the query that we saw. So there was this URL encoded get query. We can do control and shift and U if we want to URL decoder, and then we can just visualize it a bit better. Notice that you see this has a new line. And if we do control and U again, oh, control and U did nothing because we need to go down and URL encode all of the characters rather than the key characters, although that's actually too many. Let's see if it works anyway. And it doesn't, okay, let me undo that. Oh, it's because I have a GraphQL here. What am I doing? Okay, try this again. Can't URL encode because it's only trying to URL encode certain characters at the moment. So I'm going to do all characters and then next. And that one works. Okay, so you can do that. Really, the only thing we needed to encode was some of the special characters there. I'm going to just do Control and Z, go back to the original one. 
And notice here we have this zero A, which is our new line. So that retrieves that anyway. Let me do, oh, I brought back the GraphQL. There we go, okay. And now we have a GraphQL tab, which means we can right click and we can do our set introspection query. We send that off and notice we get back an error because it has not got that new line in it. What if we now try and just put a new line here and send, and this time we get back everything. And next, I'm gonna take a copy of all this. Let's go and visualize it because I don't wanna read through these 1,200 lines. I'm gonna go back to this GraphQL visualizer that we used in the previous video. And now oh, we need to remove our HTTP headers at the top. And now we'll see the schema. So we can make a single query, which is get user. It takes an ID, which must be specified. And the user has this user object, so it has an ID and a username. So we could construct this query manually, but like we did in the previous video, why don't we just right click the response, go to GraphQL and then save the queries to the sitemap. And then we can go in here, we can go to our API and notice then we've got a mutation and we've got a query and the query you can actually see here, it's taken in a username. So I'm gonna send that to the repeater. And if we have a look here, it is not taking a user. So go to the GraphQL tab. The ID is currently zero. Let's change it to one. And there's the administrator. So can we get the password? What if we put in here, like we did in a previous video, put in the password, send, and we get back this error because there is no password field. So the only other option we had was the mutation. Let's go back to the sitemap and send this one to the repeater. Very hard to read. So we could URL decode it, or we can just go to the GraphQL tab. And this takes in an ID and a username, and then it will delete that user. Oh, it actually just takes an ID here, as you can see. So we need to find out the user. First of all, let's go back to the last query in the repeater, and oh, we need to take out the password again. So the second ID is Wiener, and the third ID is Carlos. So we wanna go back and delete Carlos. We click send, we get back this message, it's a 200 okay, so presumably, if we now go back to the homepage, we've solved the lab. And that is how we can find a hidden GraphQL endpoint, even when there are some introspection defenses in place. In the next video, we'll look at bypassing GraphQL brute force protections. As usual, let me recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to find some GraphQL vulnerabilities and get paid for it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.